Live from Mountain View, California, it's The Q at OpenStack Silicon Valley, brought to you by headline sponsor, Mirantis. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Frick. Okay, welcome back everyone, live in Silicon Valley for OpenStack SV, this is theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Jeff Frick. The Cube in Silicon Valley is kicking off this September, our operations, we're going to go out to all the events around Silicon Valley, all the most important events, talk to the tech athletes, the leaders, really the leaders in innovation, and it's not just going to be the big events, but it's also going to be little events, little, little OpenStack meetups. These are the important uh, opportunities for us, and we're certainly excited to be at the, that's now a big event, OpenStack SV, <laughs> which grew out of just sheer demand for OpenStack, um, conversations and thought leadership and information. Obviously OpenStack has a big event coming up uh, in Paris, and so, I mean, that's just a few months away, and there's still huge demand. Our next guest is Jonathan Bryce, Executive Director of OpenStack Foundation. Jonathan, welcome back to theCUBE. Yes, thank you for having so, me. So, I mean, December is right around the corner. You've got OpenStack Paris, why wait? Just boom, Silicon Valley's hot and heavy for <laughs> OpenStack. It's, uh, it's in November, yeah. It's, uh, I guess, uh, less than two months now. We're going to be having uh, probably about 3,500 people um, join us in, in Paris for uh, the next OpenStack Summit. And uh, that is, uh, that's, you know, really the, the, uh, the it's a week of, of all things OpenStack. And this is a great preview and a great opportunity to connect with a lot of the, the people that we're going to see over there and, and hear, um, you know, some advanced product news and, uh, and, you know, various things that people are already working on. Just to clarify, I mentioned December, you mentioned November. The dates are the third, fourth, Third through the seventh of November, yes, right? Yes, so, okay, exactly. Just to make sure we get the dates right. So obviously Paris, not everyone makes a trip across the pond. Certainly here on the East Coast, it's a nice hop, but for California, um, some people might not make it. So Silicon Valley kind of fills the void here on the West Coast. Yep. Um, give us the update, okay? Um, obviously we, get, we heard from Marantis, the CEO, asking Martin some tough questions around mm -hmm. kind of what's working, what's not working. What's yeah. your take on the state of the union of OpenStack? Well, I think that, uh, that the thing that's been the most exciting for me in the last six to nine months is um, the, the new users who have, uh, who have been coming out and talking about what they're doing with OpenStack and, and also kind of organizing themselves into a, a really strong and active user community. Um, you know, when, when OpenStack started, it was, it was uh, all developers, and then we had um, you know, a lot of companies that came in to start building products and services, and now you know, we have the users coming in, and it's really, the, I think, the, the piece that, uh, that, that's extremely critical to keep us focused in the right direction. And, and you know, there's, there's nothing like a user to sort of, um, to, to just kind of say the obvious thing and, <laughs> and, and tell you, you know, like, oh, duh, yes, uh, we're, we're not doing the right thing here, or you know, tell you, yes, this is great, that, that we're on the right path. So conflict and crisis creates opportunity. What are some of the things that you guys have gone through this past year? Because when you have the momentum, you guys certainly have momentum, the demand is high. This puts more pressure on the community to yeah. one, coexist, but also have you know, food fights that are good and productive but not distracting. So yeah. can you comment on some dynamics that have changed or that's happening this year? Yeah, I mean, I think that, uh, that the, the challenge that we continue to face, even now four years in, is, uh, is just how quickly it continues to grow. And if you look at, uh, at, at even just from a practical standpoint of accepting the code contributions, that is, is something that we've built a lot of innovation, a lot of systems around, but those continue to, uh, to you know, get stretched and, and, um, and pushed in different directions. And uh, so that's, that's, that, I would say, is, is really the biggest challenge that we continue to face. And along with that, you, know, you, you have kind of how do you make an efficient collective decision-making process for 3,000 developers who are distributed across 100 countries, you know those are those are not uh, not necessarily solved problems. You can go find a pattern <laughs> to, to follow. So growth pains is better than non-growth pains, right? So yes, at, yeah. least, at least it's a positive yes. growth thing. So one of the questions that came up uh, with our last segment was how to make OpenStack easier for developers. Obviously, it's always been about the developers, mm -hmm. but when you're building out infrastructure and standing up a lot of code. There's a lot of foundational work that needs to get done in, in terms of the technology at the same time the app developers want, you know, me too, Amazon, plus more features. Right. How do you balance that, uh, the operationalizing of OpenStack as a community yep. with just the needs of the basic yeah. developer? Yeah, I think, I think that this is where the, the strength of uh, the ecosystem comes into play. Um, you know, some people see all of the vendors and the companies involved as, as, a, as sort of, you know, a guarantee that there's going to be fighting and bickering. 
Um, but it, it's, it's such a big market out there. And, uh, and really what we're talking about is, is changing the way that all IT is done, that every server, every storage device, every networking device, and every data center is managed. That's a huge opportunity, and there's not going to be one approach that works. So you know, I think that, that really the, the ability to go get OpenStack as an appliance, get OpenStack as a distribution, get OpenStack as a you know, public cloud service or a hosted private cloud, those, that's, that is um, something that, again, it's really come along in the last six to nine months um, where we're seeing mature products. And we actually, um, uh, the, the foundation created a, a, a service. It's at openstack.org slash marketplace that sort of catalogs a lot of those, those different options and compares them. You know, you know, we love open source. We're very bullish on it. On it. We're excited about what you guys do. And, and then when Martin Mikos was on recent, just on this last segment, I noticed he weaved in the Lampstack comment in the <laughs> keynote, yeah. which we all love what happened with Lampstack. But if you look at the total population of developers back then, it's just sheer onboarding of more and more developers every year. Right. More open source lines of code, more open source investment from venture capitalists, more adoption by big companies. Yeah. So certainly a different technical environment from Lamp to cloud. Um, so I want to get your comment on that dynamic and also the comment from uh, Jesse Proudman on uh, CrowdShare that said cloud is being driven from the edges, uh, quoting you, and he 100% agree with that. So, you know, sure. there's a new dynamic in cloud. Yeah. You can't just take LAMP dynamics and saying that's going to be the model. It's obviously LAMP did some things in that era right. to the modern era we're in now. So yeah. comment on that. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, that LAMP, um, you know, and especially Linux were really the pioneers that convinced um, business that open source was an okay thing to, to do. <laughs> and, and which is kind of a crazy idea to think now that there's a time where it wasn't accepted or it was really risky. Or, but um, you know, I, think, I think that it's, it's, it's extremely widely accepted now. And I think that's one of the big differences. And I think the other one is, I, I talked about the software-defined economy. Every company today is a software company, pretty much. I mean, they, any company of any size does custom software development. They have tools, they have processes, they have customer interactions that are too key to just go buy off the box or off the shelf box software. And so they're building it themselves. And in order to do that, they need infrastructure that attracts their developers and allows their developers to move quickly. And so it's, uh, it's, it's definitely a movement that's driven by developers from the edges of the business who are um, just wanting to be able to work and, uh, and move faster than ever before. So John, I want to get your take too on a couple comments from, from Adrian in the last segment. He said, you know, kind of the good news is that the, the, the classic problem of OpenStack being just hard to deploy and hard to get, get going mm -hmm. is, is basically solved. In his words, you can get up and running in 20 minutes. Right. But he said what the, the kind of the, the, the bad news or that we're not there yet is really getting the developers and, and getting more developers and, and a more active developer mm -hmm. community. I wonder if you can kind of talk, speak to those comments and then yeah. assuming the second one is, is in line, you know, kind of what are some of the things you guys are doing to, to grow that developer engagement? Yeah, I mean, when we talk with users, the technology is not what we hear um, them say is like the, the main barrier to entry anymore. It's, it's almost all cultural and organizational. And, uh, and, and it, some of it is, yes, you know, getting their developers on board. Some of it is getting their IT team on board, getting their executives on board. It's a different kind of um, frame of mind to approach you know, cloud versus traditional infrastructure. And that, that's part of it. Um, in terms of, of attracting developers, I think that, uh, that you know, we're, we're four years into this. And when we started out, we had very raw technology. And you've got to get that technology baked before you can attract a user base that's going to operate clouds. And you, ha you have to have those clouds operating before you can have developers who are programming against them. I think really you know, in 2014 is when we're just getting um, to that point of, uh, of really having a wide variety of public cloud options and, and you know, easy to install um, private cloud options to start attracting those developers. And we uh, you know, throw out another link, developer.openstack.org. This is something we just kicked off. Um, which is targeted directly at, uh, at, at attracting those developers who are going to be writing their applications for cloud and, and want to be able to target OpenStack clouds. And what, and what is that site so, so do it, for them? Yeah, so it, Give it, it a good plug. It gives you um, basically patterns for, um, for programming against an OpenStack environment. It gives you links to resources like libraries that, uh, that abstract away what OpenStack cloud you're talking to, so you can build hybrid applications. You can build hybrid applications across OpenStack and Amazon. Um, so it's, a, it's, you know, it, it's really a toolkit and documentation to help developers kind of accelerate into uh, building um, really functional apps in, in, in an OpenStack world. So the other kind of thing that always comes up in an open, open uh, source kind of context is, right, is big guys versus little guys, and mm -hmm. are the big guys just coming in because they want to join the club, or they want to squish the little guys, or yeah. are they really contributing? And there's been a lot of big companies making announcements in support of 
of OpenStack and integrating with OpenStack, but then you get, you know, with HP purchasing Eucalyptus, you know, big guy taking out a little guy. So what's kind of your perception of the role of, of the really bigger enterprise players mm -hmm. and how's that changed in say the last year yeah. uh, in, in, uh, with respect to Open, OpenStack? Well, I think that any time that you can attract any company and get them into the fold, contributing source code to an open project, that's a win. And you know, we're happy for everybody who, who has joined up. And we have, um, I think, over 300 companies who have signed our corporate contributor license agreement now. Some of them, the first time they've ever done it, uh, you know, done that for an open source project. So, so very uh, excited with the momentum that we've had on that front. But then, yes, you know, the, the contributions range all over the map. Sometimes they're making small contributions that are focused around um, you know, just supporting a product that they have that integrates with OpenStack. The thing that, uh, that, that I've been really happy to see from some of the larger um, players like HP and IBM and Red Hat is the way that they um, fund strategic contributions. Things like documentation and testing and Q&A um, for, uh, you know, QA environments for everything that, uh, that all of the software development that happens. Those are things that, that cost money, take up resources, and, uh, and sometimes, you know, the smaller guys, they don't have the, the spare resources to put into that. So you have to have both. You know, you have to have, I think, the smaller, the smaller teams that are pushing the envelope on innovation and features. And then, you know, you need some of the, the, the very committed strategic players that, uh, that, that have a lot, to, uh, a lot of resources to bring to bear on those critical components that maybe aren't as sexy, but are just extremely important yeah, to maturity. Yeah, that's interesting, because nobody ever, I've, that's the first time I've ever heard anyone <laughs> really talk about making an investment in that type of yeah. infrastructure to really enable the community, when for them it's just a couple days, you know, run off the, uh, run off the <laughs> right, production yeah. line, right? Not, not yeah. a big thing, interesting. So on OpenStack Paris, give us a taste of what we're going to see there, and just some updates on what you expect to lure folks to come over or sure, participate yeah. virtually. Well, so, um, in OpenStack Paris, it's our first, uh, our first summit in Europe, and uh, definitely going to be a different audience. Every time we go to, uh, to you know, a different continent, the makeup shifts dramatically. And, and that is just, I think, really good, especially for people you know, who are here in kind of the, the, the valley bubble. They, they get the same sorts of stories a lot. You go to Europe and you hear completely different stories. Um, but we have a lot of users. One of the big themes that I think uh, we're going to hear a lot about is, um, is telco operators and uh, network function virtualization. NFV is just something that is, it's becoming real, it's not just another buzzword. And these telco operators, you know, this is a trillion dollar industry that is really embarking on remaking how they do all of their technology deployment. So that's a huge opportunity, OpenStack is in the middle of it, and uh, we have Telefonica, Orange, Deutsche Telekom, Swisscom, AT&T, Inter from Italy, just you know, a half dozen or more um, telcos who are going to be there talking about you know, this, this shift in this trillion dollar industry. Yeah, certainly the NFB is certainly a big part of it with, uh, at the network level. Um, final comment, I want you to give folks a taste of this event here. Um, are you excited by it? Was it kind of an impromptu thing, really? But I mean, what, what, what surprises you about this event here? Well, I think that, uh, that you know, any time we, uh, we, we put these events on, it's, uh, it's really interesting to see you know, who shows up. And, and we've done these in, in Paris and Tokyo and Beijing and, and, uh, and all over the world. And, and this is, uh, um, you know, I think one of the first sort of general OpenStack events that we've done like this here in, in Silicon Valley. And uh, it's a great audience, it's sold out. Um, uh, if you go and you look at the sponsors, great companies who are here talking about their integrations with OpenStack. It gives you a, a real flavor, I think, for just how much um, OpenStack has grown, how broad it is now. You know, it really highlights to me the innovation and the community cohesiveness. Whenever you have kind of these flash events, I'm not calling them, they did some marketing around, but it wasn't, you know, a huge, you know, big tent event here. It's just really a testament to the community. Yeah. And I think it's not going to stop. Um, John, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Congratulations. I know you guys are really working hard uh, with the community. This is theCUBE, of course. We're documenting the growth. We'll go to the meetups. Jeff and I have been to a few uh, meetups where we had some little debates, the API debates, to uh, what's going on with the network layer. And again, if you have some interesting events in Silicon Valley, let us know. The Cube Silicon Valley is uh, kicking off its operations um, this month, where we will do a little bit smaller events to get, the, get that signal out there, a lot of action. Uh, this is theCUBE. We're here live for the big event here in Silicon Valley for OpenStack SV. Thanks for watching. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.